Martin and Shema. Okay, so hi everyone. I'll try to keep it short. Uh, just a small introduction. I'm Martin with Stefan. We're from the Berliner Wettergilde, the club here in Berlin, but we actually train in Potsdam. Um, let's just uh, set some common ground first. Uh, like fighting philosophy in 133 is uh, there are seven walls, and these are basic stances or positions uh, where every fencer fights from. And 133 gives us a set of processes to counter these stances, uh, get in that safe, strike the opponent, and get out that safe again. So this would be like ideal fight to not get hurt while um, while get rid of the danger. So um, the play I want to talk about is on a later displayed in the menu. It's on the folio 11b, but it's actually I would say the very, very first step you would uh, undertake in the first play of 133. So first play of 133 is a uh, half shield versus first ward. And on folio 11b, we are um, told that if our opponent omits uh, all his defenses, uh, we should, not very intense of thought, uh, get to his strike. And of course, if he truly does omit all actions, this strike could be anything, yeah? So if he does nothing, it doesn't matter. He can strike anything he wants. Um, but if we uh, believe the manual, and it says, go for a strike as here, so I think the depiction has some meaning, then we should look at that image. And the image shows us a position where our own thumb points up, and the fingers points down. So uh, this excludes a couple of options <laughs> like every true edge strike from above, because there the thumb points down and we don't see the fingers at all. Uh, this strike has the thumb pointing up, the fingers pointing down, but the blade is on the other side of my opponent and in the manual it's here. So basically it could be a right under half, maybe a middle hull, it could be like a twerk hull motion or a shear hull maybe, or what I would suppo uh, suppose it's like a, a right sturz hull. Okay, so um, where do I get that this uh, might be a right sturz hull? Well, in the manual, uh, on the very first pages, you know a couple of details, like foot positioning is one, which very quickly fades away. But for the whole first half of the manual, you will see that uh, the tunic of Priest and his scholar, uh, especially at the elbow, are very like saggy. So there's some over excess of uh, tunic there. And the theory would be uh, that these uh, saggy tunics indicate where the elbow position is. Okay. Because um, most of the time, we see uh, the saggy tunic pointing downwards, indicating, okay, like in this half sheet position, my elbow should be pointing downwards as well. Okay? The first exception we see is uh, when we conduct uh, crooker, and it's shown from this side you are viewing now. So, like, we are both at the uh, play on 6R, and we are both conducting crooker. Okay? So, we're in this position. And all, if I point my thumb over 90 degrees in this direction, you will notice that my elbow has to turn up. That's uh, just an opinion. And uh, we also know that our sword is pointing this direction because on the very next plate, uh, the scholar thrusts under the sword. And we know that it's uh, thrust in the underbind because it says, here he should be where his head, because obviously this strike is still possible. Okay, and then he goes into a schützen position, but we're not told anything more. So this is the first time we see where we can clearly <coughs> tell the elbow should be facing towards the viewer. And it's also the first time we don't see Sagi Tunic at all. Okay, so I would conclude, okay, if the uh, Sagi Tunic is pointing downwards, then this, that's the elbow position. If we don't see it, that might be because the elbow po uh, points towards the viewer. 
Okay, and there are a couple of sections, uh, exceptions where we don't see that Sega tunic, all of which I could make sense of. I'll um, print them all out and we can discuss them later, just to keep this short. But the most important one is on 11b again. There we see like really this position and there's the Sega tunic like on this side. Okay, so in the back log arm there is a Sega tunic, but on the uh, right side, so the salt arm, there's none. Okay, and thus, thus, thus I would um, conclude this, that this would be really like um, a like right ox position with the elbow facing towards the viewer. And to make this um, a cut, it just can be now like the right Sturzau going directly over the top of the shield, striking around, going in here and maybe even, even with a possible thrust afterwards and so on. Okay, so that's the Sega tunic theory. Uh, just <laughs> to get back to some, <laughs> just to get back to some uh, fighting principles, like we want to get in and out and all of that, that's safe. Uh, if we're here in half shield and he omits all action, we are told to immediately stri uh, go for a strike. But this strike is still a tempo, okay? So I commit to a motion and in that motion, my opponent can still do a motion of himself. Okay, so if he doesn't omit all action and strikes at me, this thing has to cover myself. And in my opinion, this one does it really well. Okay, because my blades here, right in uh, on the cone, like Pernier said, like if I enemy blades here, I want this there. If enemy mm -hmm. uh, blade is on. Um, the right side of mine, I want my blade there. Um, and that's why I don't think that like the right trash hell uh, does this really well because there's still a small line there, okay? Like if you fence longsword, you wouldn't strike a sheer hell at the enemy blades on this side, okay? You would try to cover yourself mm -hmm. and that's why I think this, um, this motion is really beneficial. And also, if I get, maybe this is like small variations, this place should still work, okay? Like, if we're here and I get too much pressure, I don't have to turn my wrist at all to go for a strike on the other side. Well, if I'm with my hand like in a travel motion, I need to turn my hand here and then I can cut around, okay? So it's uh, inherently a bit slower, okay? Just because you have to turn your wrist. Yeah, um, and also the follow-up, okay, from this position, uh, it's like, if you're too short, you can also uh, go, for, go for the thrust, and I think it's, um, it's a really nice strike to have in your repertoire. So I don't want to be dogmatic about it at all, you can do what you want. Uh, I like you can do the right thing, our technique. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just like uh, if the enemy blade is on my right side to have my own blade there as well. Yeah. Okay, to, to not only rely on my butler, but uh, to go for like a double cover of sword and shield. Okay. I think mm -hmm. that should cover it quite well. Yeah. Hmm? Because I see that uh, when you finish your blade, you put on the neck and the shoulder level down the head. So yeah, I'm so sorry if the shoulder could get No, I, 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 aim, I aim like here and I'm like really gentle now because this is, uh, this is, not, this is not a shaving manual. <laughs> 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 but uh, the strike, a couple of you uh, would have got it uh, to know it. This really lands on the, still lands on the side of the mask. Okay, and you press it inwards, press it inwards. I can cut, I can thrust, I can go around and get out. Okay. <coughs> Is this uh, also what you recommend when um, you are going to the Religatio, to the overbind, and then uh, so, so after the, the shield strike? Shield strike? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. Yeah, because, because there's actually yeah. one shield strike situation in the first half manual where it is displayed like this, and you could <laughs> argue, you can even do the right Sturzer with the elbow pointed down, and like Mehr, Paul Hector Mehr of the 16th century, 
even did a similar thing. Of course, he did Timo also, but he had the shield strike and left the enemies with this um, with this leg behind here. And there, it clearly does look like this. Okay, elbow pointing down, but still like this cut. Okay, and he said, says it's the false edge cut. Okay, so maybe has some context we don't have anymore. But um, my take on it is um, if we're in the overbind on the right side and I get the shield strike and the blade is still still over there, I go for this. Okay, and sometimes you even get in this um, like the depiction which uh, you can see in the Codex Manistee where his blade is like folded up here. Yeah. Okay, but if he goes for like a late mutatio gladio, this or even this is more beneficial. Okay, just like I said, I like to have my blade to cover me. Okay, so that's my uh, approach to it, and you're free. Feel free to use whatever you want. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>